Well, we raise rabbits, of all things. We've been breeding rabbits now for a little over six years. Um, I have worked with rabbits longer than that. I raised rabbits as a child, all through my childhood when in the Midwest with my uh, grandparents, Eastern European descent, Ukrainian. Yeah, we're good. We're going? Are we rolling? Right. Yeah, we're rolling. Right. So this is Justin Cooker from Cooker Homesteading um, at Cooker Ehoff. And we're here with... Eric Shevchenko from Old World Rabbitry and Old World Organics. And what do you do at Old World Rabbitry? Well, we raise rabbits, of all things. We've been breeding rabbits now for a little over six years. Um, I have worked with rabbits longer than that. I raised rabbits as a child, all through my childhood when in the Midwest with my uh, grandparents, Eastern European descent, Ukrainian, and uh, just been driven to uh, change the rabbit industry and change the world of gardening and change the world of organics. And we've developed uh, different breeds, taking old heritage breeds to create a. Um, new breed of rabbit which we have not yet uh, got a true f1 out of it but we're going to probably have it in the next four years and what does a f1 mean oh, Sorry. Uh, an f1 is this a little uh, more of a solid genetic okay so when we when we make it more solid we get a more uniformed animal so mm -hmm. um not like uh we're probably not gonna pro we're gonna try not to do like most people do with the line breeding we're doing our best not to line breed gotcha um we have also developed a uh, fertilizer out of our rabbit manure. Gotcha. We developed our fertilizer by developing our feed program. Most people that are feeding rabbits, some people do the forage diet, some people do the pellets. We've kind of put the two together. So our pelletized feed is an organic non-GMO feed with alfalfa, pea, kelp, yucca, comfrey and nettles is uh, one of the uh, couple of the other herbs that we've added to it to create a more fertile manure to make more fertile soil a better fertile, uh, fertile a more fertile soil mm -hmm. sorry it's all good yeah <clears throat> and then ear mites we talked about oh yes ear mites what a fun one that is with rabbits um tried and true using the mineral oil excuse me using mineral oil tea tree lavender and citronella, we spray that in, in uh, use a spray bottle actually instead of a dropper. And become pretty good at just walking through and hitting the ears as you go along. Pretty good aim. <laughs> and um, it works quite well. And keeps the infection down and keeps other biting insects away as well with the tea tree and lavender and citronella in it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you have two rabbits here oh, and yes. what, what? So this is what we've been developing. We've been yes. working on what I grew up Knowing rabbits as when okay. we hunted rabbits in the Midwest with my family. Okay. Similar to the uh, to the cottontails. Cottontail, yeah. So over over the past few years uh, breeding these animals, we found that uh, this color started coming out, and so I had one of those aha moments. I was like, aha. Are we bringing out a recessive gene from a hundred, hundred, a hundred or more years ago? Mm -hmm. Even longer. I mean, even back to I mean, did a lot of studying on the history of rabbits, and even the e Egyptians raised rabbits for me. Yeah. They didn't raise domesticated rabbits back then. Yeah. So with breeding a lot of the old, the old heritage breeds, mm -hmm. we kept seeing this recessive gene coming out. Hmm. So now we have kept the majority of them. And we're finding traits of, of course, color, um, hybrid vigor, and different colorations in the meat. Gotcha. We have gotten darker medallions throughout the entire, through the entire, through the entire process. Even in the hindquarters, where usually it's all white meat when you're raising your Californians yeah. and New Zealands. Yeah. And so this one specifically, like what breeds are in it? Do you, uh, do you yeah. know offhand? <laughs> I mean, we can go from 
giant chinchillas, blanc de otos, uh, Florida whites to there is some New Zealand, there is some uh, Californian, somewhere somewhere's in the bloodlines as well. Okay. And a few others. Gotcha, gotcha. And I can see you're putting that rabbit to sleep. Uh, is yes. that is that a technique that you've figured out? Uh, yes, we actually use this for when we uh, actually process rabbits. We relax the rabbits before processing. Okay. Gotcha. Um, do you have any, any more questions? How close are you to getting it breeding through the time? To this? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we started out with two or three in the litter, and now we're up to uh, full litters having this coloration. Yes, yes. That's impressive. Yes. Cool. Oh, nice. And how many does and how many bucks do you keep? Um, we've got about... So I do keep more bucks than normal. I mean, I keep upwards of anywhere to eight to twenty at a time, just to utilize the, uh, the different traits that they have, and um, yet it be loin length, yet it be leg sizes, um, and coloration as well. I uh, those were upwards of hundred to one hundred fifty at a time, which we are increasing. We'd like to be, you know, by next spring uh, the, at the three hundred mark of breeding goats. Okay. So do y'all, in Texas, because of our summer heat, we have issue with male sterility? Um, we do get that now and again, we do, but most of the time we keep them pretty cool. Um, the area that we're in, we've done some things. Um, I have also looked into, like, uh, um, we had a freak heat wave just last week, so we, we did have some issues with um, rabbits starting to overheat. We do put, I have put misters in before. I have done the ice water bottles, but to do that for 100 rabbits is a little intense. So the cool. misters do help, and they also cut down on flies and other things in, in the gotcha. barn, which is actually really nice. And then um, I was looking into a way of doing it so you could have a, a, a better temperature and a more ambient temperature. And we're looking at you know digging down four feet mm -hmm. and creating a kind of like a like a swamp cooler almost, or like hmm. a uh, what do they call it? Where you store the vegetables in? Jesus, slip in my mind. Root cellar, root, like a root cellar type of hmm. concept. Hmm. So go down four feet, put your you know your slatted wall up, and then we do a hoop house structure, okay. and covering that with a you know a UV braided tarp, and keeping that uh, keeping it lower under under the ground, and keeping a a cooler, more ambient temperature throughout the season. Okay. So because of that, you're able to breathe throughout the year. Yes, I breathe all year round. So, and yes. what did you say your typical litter size was? Um, we're, I mean, you're averaging six, but I mean, we've had litters of upwards of 12 and 13. That's because I, I kept some that had such large litters. And um, there's pros and cons to that. You know, we have to move some around to other, other females since they only have 10 teeth on them. So, yeah, they're not able to feed them all. So you end up with a couple of runs if you leave the 12 in there. And you mentioned your customer base is primarily restaurants? Uh, we do a lot of restaurants here. This weekend has been really awesome because we've got a lot of local people that are really interested now in like, eating rabbit and telling stories of when they grew up eating rabbit and whatnot. Do you have any, like, a favorite rabbit recipe? Oh, jeez. I have no favorites, but there's one, there's a few that we've done. We've actually done, I do a lot of Eastern European food, so mm -hmm. well, Ukrainian or Russian, so we've done rabbit Kiev is one of them mm -hmm. and we did one where we actually infused the butter with uh, barley grass so it was all things that the rabbit ate on the plate with with, with the rabbit kia so mm -hmm. we did barley grass barley syrup we did the blintzes with it with some actually some mushrooms and whatnot but uh, one of my favorites one of them i have way too many <laughs> Well, that's, that's good when you have a lot of yes, we, So your bunny brood, is that just pellets or is it Oh, we actually, it's, a, it's, non -ground, it's not ground, it's a, it's a fresh manure. And we put, um, we put, uh, I mean, we, it's a fresh ground product. We do sift off some of the hair. And we're, we're looking at starting a worm farm to use that in to have a, a super, a, a super, uh, super worm castings basically nice. um, we do add two things to our our mix after the uh, the grinding process we do add more kelp and we add aloe vera because we're very um, more interested in plant hormones than nutrition and the nutrition is great in feeding the plants your NPK and your your micronutrients but plant hormones are truly what makes it grow including your mycorrhizals and fungi I mean there's a, a symbiotic relationship through it all yeah so and how can people find it uh, you can go to oldworldrabbitry.com or oldworldorganics.net. Those are our two companies. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs>